out is following the story from outside the court in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, the, the, it's a high profile trial. It really is putting the spotlight on China's control of Hong Kong. Walk us through the case. Michael, here in Hong Kong, I'm standing outside the West Kowloon Magistrates Court for day one of the national security trial of the media mogul and very high profile China critic Jimmy Lai. Outside the courtroom, security is tight. Authorities have warned against any disruption. Inside the courtroom, Jimmy Lai was seen wearing a gray suit. He appeared calm. He was surrounded by at least four corrections officers who were guarding him. He also smiled and waved at supporters inside the courtroom. A number of people inside Hong Kong and around the world are watching this trial very, very closely because it's seen as a test, a test of Hong Kong's freedoms and judicial independence in the wake of the national security law, which was imposed by Beijing on the territory in 2020. Watch this. Considered by many as a father figure to Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement, Jimmy Lai always knew his actions might attract the ire of authorities, but he didn't let it phase him. I think it's a good idea anytime, any situation that you are in to fight for your freedom. Because, because without freedom, you have nothing left. In a recent media briefing, China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs not holding back in their criticism of Lai, calling him, quote, one of the most notorious anti-China elements bent on destabilizing Hong Kong. After numerous delays, the former media mogul returning to court to finally face trial under Hong Kong's sweeping national security law. Since that legislation was imposed by Beijing in response to massive social unrest and anti-government protests, authorities have cracked down on dissent. Today, most of Hong Kong's political opposition are either in prison, like Lai, or have fled the territory. As the founder of the Apple Daily, once Hong Kong's largest pro-democracy newspaper, which regularly challenged the government, Lai is the most high-profile critic of Beijing charged under the national security law. He faces a maximum sentence of life in prison on multiple counts of colluding with foreign forces to endanger national security, as well as a single charge of sedition under a law that dates back to Hong Kong's colonial past. 76-year-old Lai has been in custody for the last three years, and his son is concerned that incarceration is taking its toll. I think psychologically he's very strong, but there is, there always is that element. There's nobody escapes the gravity of age. And at his age, he is at a tremendous amount of risk being in maximum security. For its part, the Hong Kong government says that all cases concerning offenses that endanger national security, including lies, are handled in a fair and timely manner. In a statement to CNN, a spokesperson said, quote, without commenting on individual cases, the Hong Kong SAR law enforcement agencies have been taking law enforcement actions based on evidence and strictly in accordance with the law in respect of the acts of the persons or entities concerned. Lai was a fixture at the student-led pro-democracy and anti-government demonstrations that brought central Hong Kong to a standstill in 2014. When millions of people took to the streets in 2019, Lai was there once again. Just months later, Lai was marched out of his own newsroom when more than 200 police officers raided the Apple Daily's headquarters. A year on, Lai's printing presses fell silent as the paper shuttered, a blow to media freedom in Hong Kong. Lai's legal challenges have mounted ever since. His lengthy rap sheet worn as a badge of honor after a lifetime of demanding democratic reform. The governments of the United States, the United Kingdom, also the Committee to Protect Journalists, or CPJ, have all criticized this trial and called for the release of Jimmy Lai. The Hong Kong government has repeatedly said that freedom of speech and freedom of the press is enshrined in the basic law and is not at risk. Back to you, Michael.